Jesus' ministry began when he was at about the age of 30. He had had a personal encounter with darkness that he met victoriously. Spoken of as the temptations in the wilderness. And the next thing that happens is that he encounters his cousin, who came to be known as John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And he was preaching something that is translated in most English Bibles today as repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That word repent is a stubborn thing. It got into the translation, as far as I can tell, with the Latin Vulgate Bible. So when the Romans, who had crucified Jesus close to 400 years prior, well, at the time they, at the time more like 300 years, um, when they adopted Christianity as the state religion, they commissioned the writing of a Bible in Latin. And it was in that Bible that the word repent came in. At the root of the word repent is that little word pent. Sound familiar? Familiar from penance, penitentiary, penal colony. It's a Latin word that means punish. And indeed, uh, self-flagellation became a practice for some in the church. I didn't hear in that list of qualities of teshuv anything about self-punishment. I think I heard regret, but that's different. We can go back to earlier Greek translations of these words, and they used a form of the word metanoia. So Greek was prevalent in the world at that time. It was probably the most universal language, at least for that part of the world. And they use this word met metanoia, which means something like a change of heart and mind. Let there be a change of heart and mind. And if we read John the, Baptist, John the Baptist's words with that in mind, how does it come out? Let there be a change in heart and mind, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Comes out differently, doesn't it? It's so easy to corrupt a spiritual teaching. So easy. You can make it, make it meaningless, ineffectual, even something true. So if you take at hand to mean it's coming next year, it means nothing. It has no spiritual re relevance. It might be some kind of, I don't know, religious prophecy, but that's different. No, spiritual truth, spiritual invitation is in the now. It's right here with us now at hand. My hand is here now with me. It's not over there. It's right here. It's at hand. Turn. Allow your hungering and thirsting to be for the experience of what is in what they call the kingdom of heaven. And in other places, the teaching was to enter the gates, to enter into that heaven. Know yourself differently there. Know who you are differently. Know the hunger and thirsting that you have differently. Feel the creative powers that you have that are working in you differently than you did prior to that moment.
Isn't that what happens when we enter a spiritual experience? It can be, and for many people it is. A spiritual experience is, um, what, a elevated human buzz, right? It's, it's like a component of the human experience. I got, a, I got a spiritual charge. I got a spiritual upliftment. I got a spiritual inspiration. And now, now back to my nine to five or whatever it is. We get the feeling that that's not what's being invited here. No, far more, something far more radical. Turn and then enter the gates, cross the threshold to know yourself on the other side of that threshold. Know the dimension of the creator that you are, that you, are, you have been born to express through your human experience. Know the powers of the creator that you have. And what are those powers? What are the powers of the creator? We could think of many things. You look out and power to make rocks, the power to make a world, or the power to move the tides, all kinds of things that are more or less not directly related to us as human beings. But when we think of the powers of creation that we have as human beings in our human world to bring to the world, I'll start with this, the power to love. The power to love. And not just love with the human love. Human love is wonderful. I'm not knocking it. But the power to, to bring the very force of creation, which is love, the magnetism of creation, the gravity of creation, that which holds and brings together. We inherit the power of divine love when we cross the thresh threshold and know ourselves there. We have the power to keep it in the human world, to bring love to the human world, and to bring love to another human being. Unconditionally, absolutely, without wavering, without conditions, without a contract, we inherit that power for real.